Hey, how's it going? My name is David Foster, and I am one of the pastors here at Shiloh Terrace. And I want to be one of the first people to congratulate you on your decision and newfound faith to have salvation in Jesus Christ. You know, it is the most important decision you've ever made or will make because it not only affects your time here on this planet, but it also affects your time for eternity and it spills over into every other part of your life from your relationships to your work life into so many other areas. You know, here at Shiloh Terrace, we believe uh, that we were not made to do life alone, but we were made to do life together. Uh, so we actually made this resource uh, to help you in your first few days as a new believer uh, so that we can encourage you, teach you, and walk with you and show you what it means to be a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. No one likes to be thrown into the deep end of the pool uh, when you don't even know how to swim. Uh, we want to give you some swim lessons right now to kind of help you in your journey with Jesus. That is just now getting started. Um, you know, I'm reminded of a story in John chapter 3 where Jesus is talking with a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a man of social clout, um, a man of stature, uh, a man who was known. And him and Jesus sit down, have this conversation revolving around salvation and what it means to be saved. And uh, Nicodemus asked Jesus, hey, what does it mean to be saved? How can a man be saved? And Jesus says, well, you have to be born again in water and spirit. Uh, the spirit part and the water part is, uh, you know, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, that when you're saved, the Holy Spirit fills you uh, from the inside out. And then Nicodemus, who is no intellectual slouch, uh, comes back at him with another question. Uh, what do you mean born again? Surely a man cannot enter into uh, his mother's womb and be born again. And I tell you that for this reason. Um, there is no such thing as a dumb question in the kingdom of God. Um, Jesus can handle any question because he's big enough, wise enough, and loving enough to answer any question that you may have. So listen, right out the gate, I want you to know this. Don't ever let anyone think that you are somehow less Christian because you got questions. Um, I have questions, we all have questions, but we walk together and we have a relationship with God and that means we can go to Him and we can ask Him questions. You know, the next step really after being saved um, is what we call believer's baptism. Um, in Acts chapter 16, there is a jailer, there's a man who asks Paul, the Apostle Paul, um, hey, what must I do to be saved? And Paul just responds back with, repent and be baptized. Um, being saved means that you've already repented. You've already admitted that, hey, um, I need some help in this life and I can't do this alone. Um, and then being baptized is just a sim symbolic expression of saying, hey, um, the old me is gone and the new me has come. In fact, I wanna read to you something from 2 Corinthians, from the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Um, the old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Um, day one, in your relationship with Jesus as a new Christ Christian, I want you to understand that you are a new creation. Uh, the old you is gone, uh, but the new has come. And we're going to walk with you in these next few days and talk to you about what it looks like to be a Christian and what it means to be in a relationship with Jesus. Because that is what it is about. And when you're in a relationship with somebody, maybe you're married, maybe you've dated someone, maybe you're in a relationship right now, you know that you have to be able to talk to one another. There's gotta be communication. If there's not communication, that relationship is probably not gonna last too long. You know what I'm saying? And so here's what I want you to understand. Um, that relationship with Jesus involves some foundational truths that we're going to teach you and walk with you and encourage you in, in your journey with Jesus in these first few days as a new believer. Um, one of those things is prayer. Prayer is simply talking to God. And if you're wondering, well, I don't know what to pray. What we say here at Shiloh is two things. One, um, 
prayer is a priority. And then number two, you just pray what you got. God can work with what you got. He can take what you have and do something with it. In fact, um, I'm reminded in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Let me read it to you. It says, And this is the confidence that we have toward Him, Him being Jesus, that if we ask anything according to His will, guess what? He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of Him. Also, I want to remind you and encourage you to read Matthew 6. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Um, it's actually Jesus telling His disciples and telling us how to pray, teaching us how to pray. And so one of those things is prayer as a foundational truth. Prayer is communicating with God, and that communication with God leads us into worshiping God. Worshiping God and praying to God help us communicate and grow in our faith and in our journey. If you've ever heard anybody say, man, I just want to go deeper, well, if you want to go deeper in the faith and get, continue to get to know God, you pray. You make time to pray consistently in a relationship with God because you have to be consistent in your communication with people that you're in a relationship with here in this world, whether it's a work relationship or if it's an intimate relationship. And then we worship, and then we get into the Word of God, Scripture, the Bible. Um, we're going to clarify that for you in the days to come in your journey as a new believer. But we're going to teach you, one, how to soak in the Word of God so that it can permeate your life and other areas of your life. Um, the next is, what is the church? What is community? You know, I mentioned earlier that we were made to do life together, and we really believe that. And so one of the ways we can do that is coming to worship uh, praying together, eating together, and then studying the Word of God together as we grow in our faith and our knowledge of God. And then the next thing is this, getting involved and serving. You know, one of the best ways to get involved um, in the church is by signing up to be in a group, but also signing up to serve in different areas. And we provide several of those opportunities in the life of Shiloh Terrace. And I really hope that you um, get plugged in in that regard, um, because there's something beautiful about serving other people and laying down your wants for the wants and needs, really the needs of others. Um, so I hope that you understand that this journey is about a relationship. And in that relationship, there's going to be foundational truths and elements to it. And those things are prayer, it's worship, it's reading the Word of God. Um, it is the church and being in community, and it's about serving one another. And we're going to teach you and encourage you on that journey. Um, I want you to practice actually talking with God right now. So we believe here at being really being thankful for so many things. So how about this? I'm going to pray the start of a prayer, and I want you to finish that prayer for me. And after you're done, why don't you go ahead and move on to day two, where we'll be learning about what it really looks like, practically, how to talk with God. So finish this prayer with me. God, thank you for...